as I said that you didn't hear, we're excited about this. We're excited about what God is doing. Um, we would love to connect with you. Uh, this technology has been made available. We've been using it for years, but we're excited that even though we fall into, uh, we fall into some uh, little hiccups with society and culture and obviously this virus, that we have this technology available so that we can move our gatherings here online. And uh, I'm just stoked for this. Could you please continue just to share this? Uh, it's not on Facebook. You can invite more people into the room. I see more people are coming in. That's great. Continue to invite people to come and sit with you and gather with us over the next few weeks as we do this. There's a Connect card again up in the top right above the chat. There's also a giving button. If you're used to giving in the box, we would love to challenge you to hit the Give button and begin to continue to give online technology you guys have provided this ministry is still going on we're still going to be reaching people and i understand that if some of you like to write checks still you can still send in a check and give that way p.o box uh, 152 hayward wisconsin i got a couple of quick announcements i think morgan's going to share the in the loop with you over in the chat it's going to be a link you can download it uh, you can view that as we go over it but a couple of quick announcements for our students, uh, a lot of you know that we were going to be going to Hungary. Now, this Hungary missions trip, obviously, last <laughs> what was interesting is last week, I had a good conversation with Allie and our elders, and we just did not feel, like something just didn't feel right. And, and I don't know about you, but we've tried to teach everyone that if you don't feel at peace about something, you should not move in that direction, right? We serve a God of peace and not a God of confusion or anxiety or frustration. So we were not having a lot of peace. There were some things that weren't falling in line and had a talk with Allie and a talk with our elders. And the elder team and, and, and us decided that we were going to postpone, we were going to cancel our hungry mission trip. Uh, a lot of that is due to the virus that's going around. Um, and I really think we heard the Lord because now we're even being affected more in our own state, in our own country. And we're hearing in Hungary that they're shutting down schools there. So that trip is canceled but with all that said there's still a meeting here at element main street at 4 p.m for parents and students that we're going to go we're just going to explain a couple of more details with you and answer any questions you have for our student ministry i talked to ali we're going to continue to have our um our students meet we're going to take it week by week but uh for right now M movie monday is still going to happen the kids have school until tuesday movie monday is still going to happen tomorrow 3 45 to 5 30 it's the same thing and youth group is going to happen Wednesday, 6.30 to 8.30. Now, parents, understand, this is optional. We do, we're not trying to force you to do this. We want you to um, use discretion with your kids. If they're sick, keep them at home. If you're, if you're not comfortable with bringing them here, it's okay. We, no hard feelings. We get it. We just thought, you know, our students, uh, I don't know if you know this, a lot of our students in our student ministry are on a group chat on Instagram. And they just desperately want to meet. They, they want to hang out. They want to connect. And so we want to give them that opportunity. Uh, Valor for Men, that's supposed to be this Tuesday at 630. We don't have a location yet. Uh, they're tearing up Main Street. I don't know if you know this, but it's a little crazy. Um, we'll, we'll fill you in more on that as we get closer. Our fifth Sunday out was supposed to be at Valley, uh, the nursing home. Obviously, they're on lockdown. So uh, just as for tonight, uh, tonight, as for today, we're going to plan on doing element church online on the fifth sunday unless something up uh, something else comes up there are a couple of opportunities that we were made aware of that i think we could man we could super be a part of i'm 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 excited to find out more information about these but i can't share them with you right now if hayward if hayward was supposed to be at the high school april 4th that was in a couple of weeks Obviously, it is uh, the schools are shut down, and therefore our gathering there is canceled. There's a video my wife made. You'll see it on our Element Facebook page and also on the F Hayward page. Um, so uh, we really appreciate Morgan and the team, the IF team, the ones that we've been planning on this. Our heart breaks for this, but there's some access that we would love to give you uh, off of Right Now Media so that you can still engage with the IF uh, conference that is going on and that's already been on. And then, as always, our Element Church online gatherings, um, just to give you a heads up, we're going to have this gathering, and then at 7.30 tonight, we're going to do a rewatch, but we're going to have a live chat going on. So it's going to be the rewatch. So if you're watching this at the 7.30 p.m. gathering, we just want to welcome you. For those who are coming in the room, 10, uh, 10 o'clock a.m., we, we're glad you're here. Continue just to uh, uh, share this event and invite more people into the room. 
Um, community groups. So let me just mention this real quick. So Battlefield of the Mind, that was supposed to be led by the Zions on Sunday morning. Obviously, we have some deal. So that's we're, we're working out kinks with locations on that. Uh, my wife is leading the ladies uh, only Bible study that's called His Word Alone. And what's really cool is, uh, I, I, I'm probably going to botch this, but I think this Bible study is all about like, um, like, like, it, I don't know, I'm going to botch it, but whatever. But my wife is just excited. But I think they're, uh, what they're going to do is plan to have a closed Facebook group and do that via Facebook. So, um, so you'll hear more things about that this week. Obviously, Valor, we talked about. And uh, there's a marriage, uh, What Happy Couples Know. That's supposed to be starting on the 25th at the Martins home. Um, we're going to keep you posted on that. We're still working out kinks again with all this stuff going on. Just be patient with us. Um, I think that's about it for announcements. Uh, hey, can you do me a favor? Some of you are gathering in your living room. Some of you are gathering uh, at your kitchen tables or on your phones or whatever. Hey, could you do me a favor? Could you take a selfie? Could you take a selfie? I would, um, I would love for you guys to uh, share your selfies of your family and all you guys uh, taking pictures of yourself and and what you're doing right now with your with your family. So uh, I'm gonna take a picture of of me. There you go. And could you take a selfie, send it to us? We'd love just to share and share with people about what, uh, what God's doing in all of our lives as we gather online. Hey, some of you may know that our president uh, has declared today a national day of prayer. And I think it would benefit us all if we would take a moment before we get started and that we would just pray. I do believe that we don't need, we, we, we don't need a mandate to pray. We should be praying all the time. Wouldn't you agree with that? I mean, if you agree with that, hit that little heart there and let me know. But we should be praying all the time. We should not be waiting for a virus to come in or for our schedules to be compromised or for our kids to get sick or for our work situation to change or for uh, schools to close or for a disaster to hit. We should be, we are the people of God on the mission of God for the glory of God and the good of others. We need to be a people of prayer. And so I want to open us up right now just in a word of prayer, and, uh, and then we're going to get started. Hey, if you're with somebody on your couch, could you just hold their hand or maybe just take a moment and just, just pause for a second? And let's just pray that God would move not only in our gathering right here, but that God would move in our town and in our community, among our schools, among our nation, and among our world. Amen? So God, we thank you that you are good. And there is nothing that shakes you. God, we know that you are bigger and stronger than anything in this world. And Lord, let this be a reminder to us that you are still on the throne. God, would you heal our land? Not just, not just with this virus, but God, would you heal marriages? Would you heal families? Would you restore uh, those who are broken and hurt and wounded? God, would you deliver the addicted and, and, and the downtrodden. God, would you bring hope to the hopeless and life to the dead? God, we pray that even today, as we dig into your word, as we seek your face, God, that the Bible would just come alive, that your word would come alive, that it would impact our lives in such a way that we would be forever changed. We thank you, God, that the church can't be stopped. Lord, that even if we did not have technology, that, that, and we didn't have a place, but that, that God, the church can't be stopped because the church can't be wrapped up in a video, it can't be wrapped up in a, in a service or a time or a location, but God, your church is just this, the people of God, <laughs> the people of God on the mission of God for the glory of God and the good of others. Thank you, God, that you are awesome, and we just praise you, we give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So type amen on there, whatever, give me a high five. And uh, yeah, so I'm excited. Hey, a lot of you know that we've been talking about Victorious, this series Victorious. Today we're going to wrap up that series. And uh, we've been talking about that, that we need to acknowledge that there is a spiritual battle going on in all of our lives. And it's a battle, again, that is not fought with weapons of this world, not tanks or, or guns, but it is a spiritual battle happening in the heavenlies. And it is no doubt a, a battle against evil and darkness that there is an enemy of our soul that is constantly trying to take us out. And the Bible gives us ways to equip ourselves to fight this battle. And we talked about knowing who our enemy is, because it would be impossible for us to engage in a battle when we do not know who our enemy is. And we talked about that. 
And then for the last two weeks, we've talked about wearing the gear, the proper gear, in order to fight the battle that is before us. We talked about the analogy, like we need to have the proper gear because you can't bring a knife to a gunfight, right? <laughs> and it would be ridiculous for you to dress up in hockey gear and get on a football field. And so we talked about that the last two weeks is this gear that we're to wear and that we're to put it on in prayer. Amen? And so today, what, what, what I want to um, talk about or conclude with is this, uh, I'm just titling it, Run to the Battle. In every soldier's life, um, there comes a point where all their training and all their experience and all their weaponry accumulates to this, to this monumental moment where they have to run to the battle, where they have to trust what they've been taught and what they've been given. And in that moment, there's no room for hesitation. It is time to go. It is time to fight. And I think of no better illustration that Scripture gives us about running to the battle than David and his bout with Goliath. So I want to give you a little backstory, and then we're going to get into it. Israel has a king. Now, Israel's king was God, but Israel was seeing all these other, all these other uh, um, uh, countries with physical kings, men, and they longed for that. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but man, when you look at that, it's like, dang, that's messed up. Like, you had God as your king, but yet now you wanted just a physical king. But nevertheless, so Saul became king, um, and Saul was was a good king. I mean, I mean, he was, but. Unfortunately, there came a place where Saul disobeyed God, and God rejects Saul. So God tells the prophet Samuel to go to the house of Jesse and to anoint another king, the next king of Israel. And through a series of, of events, and to much of Jesse's surprise, Samuel anoints his youngest son, the, um, <laughs> the, the sheep herder, the pretty boy, the, the musician, as Israel's next king. Some time after this, the Philistines come to wage war with Israel. And there's a valley in between them. And, and so the Philistines are sitting on one side of the mountain, and, and Israel's on the other side of the mountain. And this is in 1 Samuel 17. And as times passed, they gathered armies to battle up against Israel. And the Philistines have this secret weapon. And the secret weapon is Goliath. They call him their, cha uh, their champion. Now, Goliath, there's a lot of records about how tall he was how strong he was and all this some would say that he was about nine feet nine inches tall in this room right now i don't even know if his head would if he would be able to stand up right now even his armor he had this coat of mail like this body armor that he would wear and this body armor would wear away anywhere in between 120 and 130 pounds that's amazing but Goliath is sitting on one side of the mountain, and he is shouting out to the, Israel, uh, to the Israelite warriors, challenging them to fight him. So I'm going to read this. This is 1 Samuel 17, 8 through 11. Are you ready? If you have a, if you have a smartphone, just go on version. You'd be more than happy to find uh, a version. Very helpful. You can go on there. There is actually a Bible app in this uh, platform, too. If you just look right below the chat, there's a little tab called Bible. You can go right there. You don't have to use your phone. 1 Samuel 17, 8 through 11. It says that he stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, why have you come out to draw up for battle? Why, why are you even here? <laughs> he says, am I not a Philistine? And are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourself and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. We will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, the Goliath looks and he says this, listen to this, this is the line in the sand. He goes, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. He said, he said I draw a line in the sand. I defy the ranks of Israel. Your God, your, your, your beliefs, who you are as a people, I draw a line in the sand. Give me somebody to fight. Give me somebody to fight. And when Saul and all of Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. David is taking care of sheep up on the hillside. 
this is all going on and David has no idea because even though David is anointed king he's still I mean he's still the youngest brother he's not invited to the party he's a young guy um his dad looks at him and says hey I need you to go and take some food go check on your brothers who are down at the battle uh, David just leaps at this opportunity so he's given some bread and cheese and he goes down and he goes to his three oldest brothers who are still serving under Saul. So as he's going to the camp, he drops off all the food to a keeper, and then he runs. Everybody say, run, run, type run. He runs to the ranks, and he greets his brothers. That's in 1 Samuel 17, 22. And as David is there, he hears and he sees this Goliath, this champion, come out and speak the words again to the men of Israel. And this is what he encounters while he's down there. 1 Samuel 17, 24 through 27. It says, All the men of Israel, when they saw the man, when they saw Goliath, they fled from him and were much afraid. And then men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And the king will enrich the man who kills him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Everybody is going, Have you seen this guy? This guy is unbelievably massive. He's actually come up to defy all of Israel. And they go, the good news is, if anybody's dumb enough to fight him and win, the king will reward that, that guy. Well, David hears this, and look in verse 26. And David said to the men that stood by, What shall be done for the man who kills the, uh, this Philistine and takes away the reproach of Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Can you imagine David? David's hearing all this. He's like, hold on. Uh, what does the guy get? <laughs> what's, what's the reward? And by the way, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this jerk? In verse 27, and all the people answered him in the same way. They told him. They said, here, we'll tell you again. This will be done to the man who kills him. Now, David's brothers, when they heard <laughs> David sort of inquiring and getting excited about this, they weren't real happy with him. <laughs> they, they were a little ticked off. Actually, uh, they, they went and repeated the words that David said to Saul. So Saul, in 1 Samuel 17, 32, and said, David uh, said to Saul, let no man's heart fail for him, uh, of him. Your servant will go and fight. So what David says, the men here, they go tell Saul, the king, they're like, hey, this kid, this kid just said this. <laughs> and so David, little David, goes up to the king and he says, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant, I, your servant will go and fight the Philistine. <laughs> and Saul tells him that he is unable to fight this giant. Like, really, Saul, you, 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 you know, David, uh, Saul tells David, like, you can't fight him. You can't fight him. Look, I mean, you're just, you're just a kid. Look what David says in, in chapter 17, 34 through 38. David writes off the king's reply and gives him his resume. This is really cool. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep. This is interesting. He said he used to keep sheep. When did this happen? He was, he was still supposed to be keeping sheep. <laughs> He said, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when there, was, when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him, and I delivered out of his mouth. I delivered the sheep out of his mouth. And if he arose again, I caught him by the beard and struck him and killed him. Whoa! Verse 36, he says, your servant has struck down both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them for he has defied the armies of god oh david's like listen i've killed lions and i've killed bears and this guy who thinks he can talk trash about my god this uncircumcised philistine is no different to me than the animals that i've killed who have come and tried to steal my sheep <laughs> 37 and David uh, and David 
said the lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this philistine he keeps calling him this philistine that is so disrespectful i sort of like it um and saul said to him go and the lord be with you <laughs> can you sort of see saul like going uh, uh okay god bless you like i hope that works out and verse 38, then Saul clothed David with his armor, and he put on a helmet of bronze on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. The problem is, is after Saul clothed him with all his armor, and David is like, I'm not used to this. David's a little guy. He's not used to wearing armor. He's used to having a sling and some stones. So Saul tries to outfit David with all this armor that is too big for him, too heavy for him, weapons that David is not familiar with. And so David goes back and grabs some rocks and his sling and he goes and he meets Goliath and here we go you ready we're gonna leave this read this last passage and I'm gonna give you four things David grabs a sling and some rocks and he goes to trash talk <laughs> trash talk Goliath first Samuel 17 42 through 51 42 says this and when the Philistine looked and saw David he disdained him for he was a youth ruddy and handsome in appearance <laughs> goliath looked at this guy this kid and was like oh that's cute <laughs> that's cute and it made him mad and the philistine said to david am i a dog the philistine is upset like seriously this kid he says am i a dog that you come at me with sticks i can only imagine that david was like yeah sort of <laughs> and the philistine cursed david by his gods the philistine said to david come to me come come here and I will give you, I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, he says, no, no, no. You come to me with the sword and with the spear and with the javelin. But I come to you, listen to this, man. Listen to this. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you defied. What? He says, in all that uh he said he said and that all this assembly may know well here 46 46 46 sorry 46 he says this day the lord will deliver you into my hand and i will strike you down and cut off your head and i will give your uh i will give the de uh, uh i will give the dead bodies of the host of the philistines this day to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth that the earth may know that there is a god in israel and that all this assembly, all these guys behind me may know that the Lord saves not by sword and not by spear. And we've heard this passage, right? For the battle is the Lord's <laughs> and he will give you into my hand. Wow. Now the whole time David is saying this, remember he's looking up nine feet. <laughs> he says, you come at me with weapons of this, of this world. I come at you with spiritual weapons. I come at you with the Lord God, the living God. You, David's like, you have no idea what you just started, but I'm going to finish it. And it's not going to be my body who's being decayed and eaten by the, he says, it's going to be you and all your buddies behind you. Shoo, man. Tell you what. <laughs> Tell you what. Listen to this. So, 48, when the Philistines arose and came and drew near to meet David, they hear this and they're like, all right, let's go to this kid. They start walking towards him. What is David's response? David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistines. David ran to the battle. David wasn't waiting. He wasn't waiting for these guys to get close to him. No, he said, uh-uh, no, 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 no. You're going to start walking to me. I'm going to start running to you. I'm going to start running to you. <laughs> and when the Philistines arose and drew near to David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine, to meet Goliath. And David put his hand in his bag and took a stone and he slung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead. And the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face, face down in the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and he struck the Philistine, and he killed him. And there was no sword in his hand. Remember, David didn't have a sword. Man, if y'all ain't getting hype about this, I'm about to lose my mind. Oh, 
He didn't even have a sword. So what does he do? So he runs to the battle to meet Goliath. In, 50, in verse 50, he said, he said he killed him, and there was no sword in his hand. And then what? Wh where is the next thing David does in 51? And then he ran again. Come on. He leaves the sheep. He runs to the ranks to find out what's going on. Goliath defies the armies of God. And as the Goliath moves towards him slowly, David takes off and runs to him. And when David kills him, he runs all the way over to his dead body to grab a sword. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine and took his own sword, took his own sword and drew it out of the sheath and killed him and cut off his head. And when the Philistines saw this champion was dead, they were like, we out, we gone, we gone. Not only did David run to the battle, but he finished the fight. And that is my encouragement to you. Don't wait for the battle to come to you. Run to it. And make sure you finish that fight. You got to stay with it. You got to stay with it. Don't give up. Don't back down. You're going to get tired. You're going to get weary. Don't back down. Stay with it. Finish it. Finish the fight. It wasn't, see, it wasn't over when Goliath fell face first into the ground. It wasn't over then. He runs again and he takes the sword and he makes sure that this thing is done. That it is done. Not only do we run to the battle, but we finish the fight, y'all. We finish the fight. I want to give you just four things real quick. Four things real quick. Write these down. The first thing is this. Never make your enemy stronger than your God. Come on. Never make your enemy stronger than your God. Now, this, this COVID-19 virus is a serious thing. But let me tell you something. It is not bigger than my God. And it, it cannot trump his power to heal deliver set free i don't care how big it is or what happens in the future my god is still bigger than anything that comes against me david never calls goliath by his name do you notice this read this passage sometimes how many times does david call goliath by his name zero times do you know what he does call him an uncircumcised philistine this philistine this chump this guy who doesn't even know the living God. This guy who's opposed to the living God. And even though Goliath is an enemy with advantages, David never places the strength of his enemy over the power of his God. I don't know what you're going through today, but I don't care how big it is, brother, sister, friend, it is not bigger than your God. Satan has been defeated you got to know this. This battle that we're in, listen, the end game is he is lost. Satan couldn't kill Jesus, and he never will. Satan's demons have to submit to God. Read every time, every time Jesus encounters someone with demons, the demons have to submit to him. Never, ever make your enemy stronger than your God. When darkness comes in your life, make your God big magnify him whatever you're facing in this life it is not bigger than the god that you serve psalm 16 verse 8 says i've set the lord psalm 16 verse 8 i have set the lord always before me because he is at my right hand because he is at my right hand the psalmist says i shall not be shaken because the god of this universe is at my side i can't be shaken I won't lose. God's got you. Somebody say, God's got me. Say it. God's got me. You need to hear that. The second thing is this. Number two, don't let what you see kill what you believe. Don't let what you see kill what you believe. When the men of Israel see Goliath and hear the insults, what is their response? They flee. They flee. I don't want to get into all this, but this whole virus thing... Let me tell you something. What we are seeing is affecting what we are believing, and it needs to be the other way around. And I'm not talking about being a jerk to people or whatever. I mean, dude, a virus is a virus. It's a serious thing. But let me tell you something. Again, what we see cannot trump what we believe. It cannot overtake that. Is it real? Yes. But my God can heal. Is it affecting people? Yes. But my God can restore. Come on. 
David only heard when he goes when he goes David only hears the reward side of this of this interchange with Goliath do you see you should read this David inquires more about the reward for delete for defeating Goliath than he inquires about the necessity or the necessary skills he will need to defeat him David asked twice about the reward that is going to be given if if somebody kills this guy he never once he never once asked about what it's going to take to do it <laughs> he's never like looking at him and going and going all right so he's nine feet tall i might need a ladder <laughs> he's like he's got a sword i might need a sword he never does that all he's wondering is like hold on what did the king say that's going to be given to the guy who who kills this guy the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7 that we walk by faith, not by sight. So what we see cannot kill what we believe. Don't lose heart because the battle looks impossible to win. It looks impossible to win. Remember that you serve a God who specializes in the impossible. In the impossible. The Bible says in Philippians 4, 13 that you can do all things through Christ, all things through Christ who strengthens you don't let what you see don't let what you see kill what you believe the third thing we're wrapping up the third thing you never go to battle alone let me tell you something something you got to realize is that David when he went to the battle he did not go by himself David is not concerned about his size or his strength or, or his age or his inexperience or worried about the possibility of failure. Why is that? Why is there in this whole scheme of things, why doesn't David step back for a moment and think about all his disadvantages that he has with a nine foot nine warrior? I mean, that's enough for me to step back and go, hmm, I don't know how this is going to play out. He never wants. David doesn't see the difference between fighting a bear to protect sheep or fighting this Philistine, this giant, to protect his country. 1 Samuel 17, 46 through 47, he says, remember this. He says, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head, and I will give, <laughs> will give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And that all this assembly may know that the Lord saves not by sword and not by spear, for the battle is the Lord's. He, He will give you into my hand. I don't know what battle you're facing, but understand this. You do not go by yourself. Remember what the psalmist says. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. Let me tell you something. You do not battle. You do not battle. You do not battle by yourself. The Lord is with you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? Who can be against you? Sure, the enemy may come at you with swords and spears, but let me tell you something. You have the Lord of hosts on your side. You are already victorious. The battle is already won. Run to the battle. In confidence knowing that if God is with you, there is nothing that can stand in your way the last thing is this don't wait for the battle to come to you don't you wait for the battle to come to you david did not wait until goliath and his cronies came to him they took one advancement step after another just a couple of steps and then david took off running at him david had no time to wait and to mess around with what this giant what this Philistine, what this uncircumcised, ungodly guy was doing. He had no time to mess around with that. It was time to run to the battle and kill this threat. David ran to the ranks to see his brother, and he ran to the battlefield to war with Goliath, and he ran to Goliath's dead body to finish the fight. Your faith in God is a weapon that destroys the kingdoms of darkness. Your faith in the living God is a weapon that destroys the kingdoms of darkness. If something isn't right in your life right now, and we all know this, you don't need to read a book to figure out what's not right in your life most of the time. Most of the time, we know what we're struggling with. Most of the time, we understand what our hang-ups are. I've never met an alcoholic or a drug addict who didn't know that they had a problem. But what we need to do is we need to stop waiting for the problem to get worse. 
and we need to run to the battle and handle it. If you're addicted to porn, if you're addicted to drugs, if you're addicted to alcohol, if you have issues in your marriage or issues with your kids or issues at work, don't sit around and wait for it to get worse. Don't keep shoving it under the carpet or under the rug. Don't keep uh, trying to ignore it. Reach out, ask for help. If you're struggling in these areas, reach out, ask for help. Personally, message us in this chat room right now. Do a private chat. Hit the live prayer button at the very bottom and just say, pray for me. I need help right now. And we're, we're going to reach back out to you. Fill out a connect card. But let me tell you something. Do not wait for the problems in your life to get worse. Run to the battle and finish the fight. Don't wait for it to get worse. Ask for help. Reach out to God and reach out to others who love Jesus and love you. Fight back. Fight back. So often we forfeit our faith by waiting for the battle to come to us. Run to the battle. Finish the fight. You can do this. You do not war by yourself. You are not going by yourself. We are with you. God is with you. And if God is with you, again, if God is with you, then you will continually live victoriously. Will it be easy all the time? No. No, it won't. But you will live victoriously. And you'll be set free. And you'll live in light and come out of darkness. Let us help you. You don't need to do this by yourself. Let us continue to fight for our faith. Read. Pray. Engage. Show up. It's really easy. It's really easy when we do this live stuff, when we do these digital uh, um, um, uh, services, that it's really easy for us just to check out. But let me tell you something. You need to hear the gospel. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's what the Bible says. Continue to fight for your faith. Let's continue to make God bigger than our problems. When bad things happen in your life, it's okay to feel bad about those. It's okay to have questions. It's okay, but man, don't let the enemy make your problem bigger than your God. No. Remember that that's just the Goliath. And remember what happens to Goliaths. Remember what God does to Goliaths. Let's continue to run to the battle before the battle runs to us. And let's soak our lives in the grace of Jesus so that we can experience the peace of God. How are you going to build up your faith? You got to get, you got to get closer to Jesus. You got to follow him. You got to give your life to him. Let me tell you something. Some of you right now, you're struggling. And it, uh, a lot of your struggle is coming from honestly just walking away from God instead of walking towards him and I get it you may be you may be a little anxious about that and I understand that but let me tell you something that battle that you are that you are trying to fight right now by yourself without the help of God it is only going to get worse reach out to God reach out to God how do I do that fill out a connect card we'd love to help you with that but you can do it right now just say God right now I need you in my life I cannot do this by myself God save me help me right now right now don't wait for the battle to come to you go to the battle run to the battle and let's see what happens Let's see what happens when people get fed up and sick and tired of living in darkness and fighting alone. Let's do this. Let's do this. I want to pray, and then after our prayer, I want to fill you in on a couple of things. Let's pray. God, I thank you right now that you are fighting our battles with us. God, I thank you right now that the Goliaths in our lives are not bigger than the God we believe in. God, I thank you right now that what we see, what we see cannot kill what we believe. Help us, God, to remember that as long as you are by our side, we will never fight alone. And we will always stand victorious. God, help all of us this week today right now to run to the battles that are waging war in our lives help us to acknowledge those places in our life that we need help and god 
continue to give us strength to fight for another day. Continue to bring peace where there is no peace, hope where there is no hope. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I love you guys. I want to just tell you real quick, we're going to have a stinking awesome time doing this for the next few weeks. And I really believe in my heart of hearts, I, I, I kid you not about this, I kid you not, I really do believe that the, that the people of God, the church of the living God is going to grow through this. That what the enemy is trying to use for bad, that God is going to turn around for good. So I want to encourage you wherever you are, where, whether you're in Spooner, Minong, Winter, Stone Lake, uh, Hayward, um, Shell Lake, Trigo, Springbrook, wherever you are, I want you to start thinking about people that you can gather around every Sunday so that we can start planting these little element churches all over our county. See, some people look at this, what we're doing right now, this thing of, oh, well, we can't meet together. Some people would look at this and they say, this is a bad thing. Listen, I love meeting together, but I love your health <laughs> enough to say, let's, let's create some distance so that everybody can get well. We can crush this thing. And what the enemy would love to think right now is that he is destroying the work of God in Hayward. But I'm here to tell you that Element Church is not alone. There are other churches that are, not, that, that are, that, that are still fighting this fight. I think what's going to happen, Element Church, is that, the opposite's going to happen, <laughs> that we're going to grow, and, and, and that, that people are going to just be brave about inviting people into their homes and having breakfast and sitting down and praying together. I think what the enemy thought he could do through this whole garbage of this virus and trying to scare the people of God, I think it's going to backfire on him just like Goliath. Just like Goliath when he was trash-talking Israel, and it backfired on him in a big way. Start thinking about people you can gather with. Start making room in your schedule. The church is bigger than a Sunday. Jesus is bigger than a Sunday. It's bigger than a building or a time or a place. Regardless, the kingdom of heaven is still going to grow and it's still going to advance because we're victorious. I love you guys. Thank you for coming. Comment down below if you need prayer. Comment down below if you need help with resources. There's a contact card above. We'd love for you to fill that out. If you'd like to give, please continue to give. There's a, there's a, it's over here. Uh, be sure to give um, in the link there, and let's continue to advance the kingdom of God. Love you guys. I'm excited. Stay tuned for all Instagram, Facebook, website. We're going to get you up to date on everything. Just give us a hot minute today, and we're going to start bringing out some updates about what's going on with all of our groups and all of our gatherings. God bless you guys. I love you. Run to the battle. Let's do this thing. Peace out.